Welcome to episode 11 of Truth Seekers. My name is Brian Radzen, of course, and it's been a minute since I've recorded the last one. Just life happened and I was trying to get a few other projects done, so um, put the recording on hold a little bit. However, I wanted to actually get back to what I was talking about in the previous episode. Although if you're watching this, it'll probably take place right after another. <laughs> anyway, um, so the last episode I talked about Phantom Tollbooth, one of my favorite movies growing up. Came out in the movie late 60s, I would say. The book a few years before that. Great book. Went over it in depth. Uh, there's a lot of metaphor in it, a lot of just really good information that can be gleaned um, within a silly kids cartoon. A lot, more than I've ever seen in my life. But So there was a lot of different aspects of that movie that I wanted to try to cover in the last piece. However, there's so many different metaphors in it that it's hard to capture all of them. So... After I taped a course, shoulda, coulda, woulda, I remembered a couple that I didn't talk about. So I'd like to talk one of them today and then probably the other one tomorrow or the next time. So I'm going to talk about time. This was a, another concept in the fictional Phantom Tollbooth world. Um, used as a metaphor by a watchdog, of course. Um... Basically came about when the little boy Milo um, was just bored and didn't want to do anything. Uh, felt like he just had to kill time or waste time. And the watchdog, of course, had to remind him that you should never kill time or waste time, but spend it, cherish it, and probably several other adjectives. But basically it's all perception, right? We don't want to kill time, we want to spend time. A lot of this means consciously acting, thinking for ourselves and what we would like. I, you know, we have time for a lot of things in life. Way more than we believe. A lot of things get in our way. We believe we don't have time, but do we? It's all perspective, what we place importance on. So, how do we spend time? Time, well, let's get into the uh, specific. Time is a man-made construct. It doesn't really have any realistic, you know, hardened physical things. But we put our faith in it. It's only real because we put our faith in it. I mean, the sun goes up goes down, gets dark, becomes light again. You know, all these things, these would signify some kind of time, but it's just day and night. It's not an actual hour. Oh, I got to be there at 837. No, that didn't exist a thousand years ago. <sighs> Maybe that's why some of us are so slow today, because we remember that time doesn't really matter. However, some of the other quotes from the movie, time marches on, time waits for no man. And I love the song. There's a lot of kitty songs. Time, time, time is a gift given to you, given to give you all you need and all you need to have the time of your life. And there's so many lines. And it's true. You have the time to have the time of your life. It's all the perspective, right? When we think we're down, we don't have enough time, we haven't been um, accomplishing stuff, we're so inundated with day-to-day -day routines and struggles and bullshit, really. They keep us down, they keep us from thinking, they keep us from moving forward. I believe it's survival. A lot of it people, some call life. You know, but we just keep going because, you know, we have responsibilities and obligations. Now, some people will say, well, I don't have time because of these obligations and responsibilities well some now it is true that some of us do have more than others I'm not going to deny that I'm single I'm not married I don't have kids I don't have as many responsibilities just with that than someone with a family however 
I mean, I myself feel like sometimes I can't make time. But we have to make time for ourselves. We have the time to have we have the time to have the time of our life. Always. And how is that? Well, we pick and choose to do all these things to keep our day busy. Which is fine. We have things to do sometimes. But how often did not do we purposely keep our day busy so we don't have to think about these things? We don't have to think about time and what we could be doing and should be doing. Maybe we're distracting. Well, distraction is going to get be something... I talk a little bit more about in the next piece because it's going to be on noise. However, time, time is a gift. But it's not real. How can a gift not be real? Well, it's a lot of it's in our head. A lot of it's in our heart and soul. But we do have time. We have time. We really do. We have all the time we need. Moments can be stretched, moments can be shrunk, outside forces, lots of factors involved, you know, can oftentimes change that. Well, what can we do? Well, we can spend time. Meaning if there's like a block of time and we're not sure what to do, maybe we have an appointment in an hour or we're, you know, got to go pick somebody up in an hour or, or, or whatever the case may be. Say we got like an hour. Would we just sit there and waste it? Play a game and distract ourselves? I mean, I've done that before myself, so I can't say I'm not guilty of it, but... How often could we take these little bits of time, whether it be an hour half hour, five minutes even, to really contemplate how much time we have, have left, say time is short, happiness is fleeting, but moments can last forever. How is that? How is that even possible? Well, when we discover their true meaning and we forget, or should I say, we remember that to keep a flow going, we must let them go. We can't hang on to moments so long that it changes their inherent meaning. So we do this. We let it go. We keep room for more. However, once we do this letting go process, that moment, that moment that really showed us a glimpse of how beautiful and how great everything can be, well, we can access that at any time. Say it was a deep connection with somebody, a friend or a family member that we connected with. And maybe they live out of town. We go home, go back into our normal routine. We can pull back to that moment at any time because we remember exactly what it looks like. In fact, when we get a glimpse like that, more often than not, we work back to it because we want to achieve it again. This is the not-so-unhealthy way of chasing the dragon, right? May, we may never keep, catch it. We may never improve. But we will move forward. And eventually we will improve, even though we may not think so. Why? Because of time. This time is a gift. So, what else can we say about time? Well, I used to always think that I never had time to do anything. Or I have so much time, but I still can't accomplish as much as someone else. Can't get as far along as someone else. Time. I don't have time to do that. Well, I do. It's perspectives, and it's what we place importance on. But I would argue that time may be fake. And we do create our own reality, so if we say it's real, it's real. If 
we, you know, chisel in our schedule so much that any deviation just throws us into a tailspin and our mind can't handle it. How can we ever affect real change or expect real change? Just sit in our cocoon the rest of our life. That ain't going to work. That doesn't actually stop time. See, we kind of stop time when we read into a moment the deeper meaning in a moment. We understand what that is. We can come back to it. That moment can stretch on forever because we remember it and its meanings and it just it sticks with us. Some other ones don't. Some are bad. How do we know which ones are bad and are good? Again, practice. It's practice. Time. It takes time. <laughs> Such a complex subject. But we can do anything with this time. We can waste it. We can kill it. But what is the best use of it? What will move us more forward? What will progress us past these generationally ingrained to uh, bullshit problems that we can't seem to best, even though we fought the same battles over and over and over and over and over again. Hmm. It'll be interesting to see time, right? 50 years from now, we're still battling these same things again. Of course, people probably thought that 50 years ago, you know, few years after the summer of love and what the fuck happened Vietnam Vietnam ended time run out people think they were running out of time so they had to splinter no see we may not have think we have time to say change the world we may not think that we can because one person can't right of course I know I've said this before but if enough people thought that nobody would ever change anything so, we may not think we have time to change the world, but you know what? We can take time to change the, we can take time to change the fate of the world. It's not whether we can or can't, it's will we? And there is our conscious choice. It really does come back to choice even with time. How do we choose to perceive it? How do we choose to spend it? How do we choose to Analyze it, cherish it, experience it. It's up to us, right? Time. I mean, before watches and clocks and, I guess they had sundials. They all wanted to gauge this concept a little bit more. Control, maybe. Just like organized religion, just like a lot of things. Not what they've turned into, but how they were originally, uh, you know, designed. But the time, the time is now because everything is raw. Everything is open. We all want to spend our time in the best way possible because a lot, half of our life has been cut off right now. Can't go to the store, can't go to the restaurant, can't go to, can't go to the gathering. Some of us do and say, fuck it. It's my freedom. Well, I guess it's your freedom to kill yourself. Not your freedom to do that to anybody else. That's why we have anti-smoking laws. You have a right to do it. You just don't have a right to harm someone else. So, I'll end with this. If we look at what's going on right now, street protests, the pandemic, authoritarian leaders slowly taking over all over the world, even more so in gaining strength because of our, you know, our dictator training at uh, 1600 Pennsylvania. So what do we do? How do we best spend our time so we can try to heal the world? We all want to, right? Well, the best thing we can do is spend time healing ourselves. Spend time with our thoughts, with our perspectives. How do we perceive things? 
And then if we think that that's an unhealthy perception or unfair compared to a lot of experiences, maybe it's time to do adjusting. And then comes the self-work, the self, uh, you know, how do you think of your own self? Do we take too much time putting ourselves down when we should be spending more time building ourselves up? Well, of course, again, perception. We change all this stuff right now by changing our perceptions. We spend time bettering ourselves, which we have been. However, when we see what really makes us tick, what we really want, we actually stop lying to ourselves, we'll finally see that that other person wants that too. Then, once we finally see each other in ourselves, we will have all the time we need to push back the bullshit and push past it like we never have before. All the time that we spent fighting each other, blaming each other, cutting each other down, calling each other names, tossing emotion, whether it's, and then, you know, not to mention the shootings, stabbings, killings, robberies, you know, on and on, etc. If we didn't spend, or should I say, if we didn't kill time doing all that because we felt like we had nothing better to do or were being protective. Once we see, once we take the time to see all that was bullshit, right? We don't have to spend time on it anymore. Look how much time we wasted that we could have been loving each other, that we could have been coming together. It's a lot, right? Well, it's something that can always be got back. We can always get it back. We can change the path at any time. We don't have to continue down the point of no return. Because we never really are at the point of no return. It's all always and always has been up to us. It will be up to us. As long as time exists. And it will exist as long as we say it does. Because why? We have time to change the fate of the world. All of us do. All of us do. Do we want to finally take it? Do we want to move past dreaming? Do we want to feel the love that we want to feel back? Do we want to grace others with our presence? With our positive, loving, cherishing, joyful, happy presence? course can't do it till we spend that time with ourselves again spending time i would argue that spending time versus killing or wasting time it's a positive versus negative balance and none of us are perfect which we're not but you know what the more that we act consciously the more that we move forward the more that we act from our heart and soul true not ignorance not protesting against someone else protesting but for what we really believe in because it's a human need it's a human need keep it towards the humanistic side of things maybe that's what we need to do well time time is all around us we have as much as we want let's spend it in the right way Let's finally move past, build the government and the society and the people and the species that we all deserve. We have the time. Well, hell, we've had a few billion years so far. It's another few hundred. Hope it's more than a few hundred if we don't kill ourselves. But you know what? We won't when we start spending time constructively and letting love not only guide our actions and our thoughts, but our choices. No choices or actions. But we need to think of that before.
Remember to like and share this video and hit the subscribe button. Links for all my social media, my website, and where to buy my books are in the description below. Love and gratitude will find a way. We just have to keep the conversations going. See you all soon.